Is your paycheck about to take a hit? The Canada Revenue Agency just dropped a bombshell. CPP contributions are skyrocketing by up to $2,250. Find out what this means for your wallet and retirement in the next few minutes. Hey everyone, Daniel here from Canada Benefits Hub. Today, we're diving into some big news that's going to affect pretty much every working Canadian. The Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, just dropped a bombshell announcement. They're increasing the Canada Pension Plan, CPP, contributions by up to $2,250. Yes, you heard that right, $2,250. Whether you're just starting your career or nearing retirement, this change is going to impact your paycheck and your future. So stick around as we break down what this means for you, your finances, and your retirement plans. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the latest updates about Canadian benefits and financial news. Trust me, with changes like these happening, you'll want to stay informed. Understanding the CPP increase. Let's start by breaking down what exactly the CRA announced. The Canada Pension Plan, or CPP, is a cornerstone of our retirement system. It's designed to provide a stable income to Canadians in their golden years, based on the contributions they make throughout their working lives. Now, the CRA has announced a significant increase in the maximum CPP contribution for 2024. Here's the deal. The maximum pensionable earnings under the CPP are increasing from $66,600 in 2023 to $68,500 in 2024. This $1,900 bump might not seem huge at first glance, but it has a ripple effect on your contributions. The basic exemption amount remains unchanged at $3,500. This means the maximum contributory earnings are jumping from $63,100 to $65,000. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The contribution rate for 2024 is set at 5.95% for employees and employers, up from 5.7% in 2023. Self-employed individuals who have to cover both portions will be contributing 11.9% in 2024, up from 11.4% in 2023. What does this mean in dollars and cents? Well, if you're earning at or above the maximum pensionable earnings, you're looking at a maximum annual employee contribution of $3,867.50 for 2024. That's a $295.50 increase from the 2023 maximum of $3,572. For self-employed individuals, the maximum contribution is doubling to $7,735, which is a whopping $591 increase from 2023. The impact on your paycheck. Now I know what you're thinking. Daniel, how is this going to affect my take-home pay? Well, let's break it down. If you're earning the maximum pensionable amount or more, you're going to see a decrease in your net pay. Remember, CPP contributions are deducted from your gross income before you even see your paycheck. Let's look at an example. If you're making $68,500 or more in 2024, you'll be contributing that maximum of $3,867.50 to CPP over the course of the year. That breaks down to about the $322.29 per month or $148.75 per bi-weekly pay period. Compared to 2023, that's an extra $24.63 per month or $11.37 per bi-weekly paycheck that's going to CPP instead of your pocket. Now, I know that might not sound like a lot to some of you, but over the course of a year, that adds up to $295.50 less in your take-home pay. And remember, that's just the employee portion. Your employer is matching that contribution, which means the total increase in CPP contributions for high-income earners is actually $591 per year. For those earning less than the maximum pensionable earnings, the impact will be proportionally less, but you'll still see an increase in your CPP contributions and a corresponding decrease in your take-home pay. The long-term perspective. Now, before you start feeling too down about this increase, Let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. Yes, you're contributing more now, but this is essentially for savings for your retirement. The CPP is designed to provide a stable, inflation-adjusted income stream in your retirement years. With people living longer and the cost of living continually rising, having a robust pension system is crucial. This increase in contributions is part of a larger, multi-year plan to enhance the CPP, which began in 2019. The goal is to increase the CPP retirement pension to replace one-third of your average work earnings, up from the previous one quarter. 
So while you might feel a pinch now, this could translate to significantly more income when you retire. It's a classic case of short-term pain for long-term gain. And remember, unlike private retirement savings, CPP benefits are guaranteed for life and adjusted for inflation, providing a level of security that's hard to match with individual savings alone. Impact on employers It's not just employees who are feeling the impact of this increase. Employers are also facing higher costs. As mentioned earlier, employers match employee CPP contributions dollar for dollar. This means that for each employee earning at or above the maximum pensionable earnings, employers will need to contribute an additional $295.50 in 2024, compared to 2023. For small businesses or companies with a large workforce, this increase could represent a significant additional expense. Some businesses might need to adjust their budgets or potentially slow down hiring to accommodate these increased costs. It's a delicate balance between providing for employees' future retirement needs and managing current operational costs. On the flip side, employers can view this as an investment in their employees' long-term financial security. A workforce that feels more secure about their retirement is likely to be more productive and loyal. Plus, these contributions are tax-deductible for employers, which does help to offset the increased costs to some extent. The Self-Employed Perspective if you're self-employed, this CPP increase hits you particularly hard. As a self-employed individual, you're responsible for both the employee and employer portions of CPP contributions. This means you're looking at a maximum annual contribution of $7,735 in 2024, up $591 from 2023. The significant increase can be a tough pill to swallow, especially for those just starting out or in industries with tighter profit margins. It's crucial for self-employed Canadians to factor this increased contribution into their pricing and budgeting decisions for the coming year. However, it's worth noting that like employees, self-employed individuals will benefit from these increased contributions in retirement. Additionally, the employer portion of your CPP contributions, so half of your total contribution, is tax deductible, which can help ease the tax burden. Reassess your retirement savings strategy. With higher CPP contributions, you might be able to slightly reduce your personal retirement savings. However, be cautious with this approach and consider consulting a financial advisor. Look for other tax deductions or credits. There might be tax deductions or credits you're not taking advantage of. Maximizing these could help offset the impact of higher CPP contributions. If you're self-employed, factor this into your pricing. Consider whether you need to adjust your rates to account for the increased contributions. Remember, everyone's financial situation is unique, so what works for one person might not work for another. It's always a good idea to consult with a financial advisor for personalized advice. The Quebec Pension Plan TPP Difference Now for our friends in Quebec, it's important to note that you contribute to the Quebec Pension Plan TPP instead of the CPP. While the TPP is similar to the CPP, there are some differences in contribution rates and calculations. For 2024, the TPP contribution rate is set at 6.4% for employees and employers, which is higher than the CPP rate of 5.95%. The maximum pensionable earnings for TPP are the same as CPP at $68,500, with the same basic exemption of $3,500. This means that Quebec workers will see an even larger increase in their pension contributions. The maximum annual contribution for employees in Quebec will be $4,000. $160 in 2024, which is $292.50 higher than in 2023 and $292.50 more than what workers in the rest of Canada will pay into CPP. For self-employed individuals, in Quebec, the rest of Canada will pay into CPP. For self-employed individuals in Quebec, the maximum contribution will be $8,320, which is $585 more than in 2023 and $585 more than self-employed individuals will contribute to CPP in the rest of Canada. While these higher contribution rates might seem like a disadvantage, they're designed to help maintain the sustainability of the GPP in light of Quebec's demographic challenges, including an aging population. Looking further ahead, the Chief Actuary of Canada projects that the CPP will remain sustainable for at least the next 75 years based on the current contribution rates and expected demographic trends. However, it's important to note that these projections are based on various assumptions about economic growth, immigration rates, and other factors that could change over time. The international perspective. It's also worth putting Canada's pension system in a global context. 
How does our CPP stack up against other countries' public pension systems? Compared to many other developed countries, Canada's public pension system is relatively modest. For example, the average worker in Canada can expect to receive about 39% of their pre-retirement earnings from public pensions, including CPP and old age security. According to OECD data, this is lower than the OECD average of about 49%. Countries like Italy, Austria, and Portugal have much more generous public pension systems, with replacement rates over 80%. On the other hand, countries like the UK, Japan, and the United States have public pension replacement rates similar to or lower than Canada's. However, it's important to note that these comparisons don't tell the whole story. Canada's retirement income system is often praised for its balance between public pensions, workplace pensions, and individual savings, often referred to as the three pillars of retirement income. The CPP increase is aimed at strengthening that first pillar, potentially reducing reliance on the other two. The role of CPP in your overall retirement plan while this CPP increase is significant, it's crucial to remember that the CPP is just one part of a comprehensive retirement plan. It's designed to provide a base level of income in retirement, but for most Canadians, it won't be enough on its own to maintain their desired lifestyle. Let's break down the typical sources of retirement income. Government pensions, CPP slash GPP, and old age security. Workplace pensions, personal savings, RSPs, TSAs, and other investments other income, part-time work, rental income, etc. The enhanced CPP is projected to replace up to 33% of your average work earnings, up to the maximum pensionable earnings limit. This is an improvement from the previous 25%, but it still means that most people will need additional sources of income in retirement. Remember, the more you can save now, the more flexibility and security you'll have in retirement. The enhanced CPP should be viewed as a complement to your personal savings not a replacement for them. Some economists and policy experts argue that even with the current enhancements, the CPP may not be sufficient to meet the needs of future retirees, particularly given increasing life expectancies and the changing nature of work. There have been calls for further increases to CPP benefits, which could potentially mean higher contribution rates in the future. On the other hand, there are also voices arguing that the CPP enhancement puts too much burden on current workers and employers particularly in the context of other rising costs. Some business groups have called for a delay or reconsideration of the enhancement plan. As a voter and taxpayer, it's important to stay informed about these debates and consider how different policy proposals might affect your financial future. Remember, decisions about pension policy can have long-lasting impacts that extend well beyond any single election cycle. Financial literacy and CPP. The CPP increase underscores the importance of financial literacy. Understanding how the CPP works, how it fits into your overall retirement plan, and how changes to the system affect you is crucial for making informed financial decisions. Unfortunately, many Canadians struggle with financial literacy. A 2019 survey by the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada found that only about 60% of Canadians could correctly answer questions testing basic financial knowledge. This lack of financial literacy can lead to poor financial decisions and inadequate retirement planning. It's crucial for Canadians of all ages to educate themselves about personal finance, including how government programs like the CPP work. If you're feeling overwhelmed by all this information, don't worry. There are many resources available to help improve your financial literacy. Government websites, financial institutions, and nonprofit organizations offer free educational materials and workshops on topics ranging from budgeting to retirement planning. Consider taking some time to boost your financial knowledge. It could make a big difference in your financial well-being, both now and in the future. Conclusion So there you have it, folks, a comprehensive look at the CRA's recent announcement about the CPP increase. Yes, it means a bit less in your pocket right now, but it's an investment in your future and the sustainability of our pension system. To recap the key points, CPP contributions are increasing by up to $295.50 for employees and $591 for self-employed individuals in 2024. This will result in slightly lower take-home pay for most workers. The increase is part of a planned enhancement to improve the long-term sustainability of the CPP and increase retirement benefits. While the increase may be challenging in the short term, it's designed to provide greater retirement security in the long run. 
it's crucial to view the CPP as just one part of a comprehensive retirement plan. Remember, everyone's financial situation is unique. If you're concerned about how this increase will affect you, consider speaking with a financial advisor who can provide personalized advice.